Welcome to Senior Strategies, Tools for the Caregiver with Amy Decker and Shane Silver. Join us on each show where you're going to enjoy a lively conversation that's going to connect you to the tools and resources that you'll need to coordinate care for the seniors in your life. We are so happy that you joined us. Hi, welcome back to our show, Senior Strategies, Tools for the Caregiver. My name is Amy Decker. I am the Director of Client Services for Senior Helpers. I am a patient advocate for Vitas Hospice, and I also worked for many years in an elder law firm in Delray Beach, which is one of our guests uh, that I met back then, Heidi Friedman, that she'll be with us today. So I look forward to you learning more about Heidi. And welcome. I am Shane Silver. I am a seniors real estate specialist. I also sit on the board of the Palm Beach County Partnership for Aging and I myself am a caregiver. Uh, the purpose of our show here is to provide you with tools and strategies for your journey as a caregiver and to show you that you're not alone. This doesn't have to be a lonely journey and there are a lot of resources out there that you probably don't even know existed. Um, on our last episode, we actually talked with Emily and Harvey Siegel from the Estate Settlers, which are senior move managers, mm -hmm. and Jana Zade Spinner, who is a senior placement specialist. Um, we had a number of questions that came in after the show regarding something that I just mentioned again, seniors real estate specialist, and exactly what that means. Right. So I wanted to back up a little bit to last week's at last, uh, last episode and just talk a little bit about that. Because it'll say S-R-E-S after it. So Correct. many people will wonder, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Right. So it means a seniors real estate specialist. And what that means is that I have been um, designated through the National Association of Realtors with additional education when it comes to working with those over the age of 55. Mm -hmm. um, we go through additional training because when working with this population, there's a lot more that comes into it than just dealing with the real estate aspect. There's emotional, there's financial, there's family dynamics. So I have that extra education. I've been doing it now for nine years. And I've also, as I said, been through it myself. So right. I've experienced right. it. And most of the clients that I deal with are either buying or selling in a 55 plus community. But predominantly, most of my clients are selling to go into an assisted living or independent living or memory care community. Quite often, we're dealing with not just the senior themselves, but the adult children. And that's means, almost a bigger job, is just dealing is. with the family dynamics of the children, making the helping to make the decisions. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, now that I threw you off, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I, I, just to show you an example. So um, m m I run a real estate team. We're a concierge uh, mm -hmm. type of team. And just to kind of show you exactly what that means is um, I got a call the other day. I got a referral from um, a senior placement specialist that was working with a family that was trying to place their dad in a facility. And before they did that, they needed to make some decisions, mm -hmm. big decisions. So one of them was their dad needed to be moved because of dementia into a, into a community, but they weren't sure what they were gonna do with their stepmom. Should they move her in with him, although she didn't really need the services? Should they move him into the assisted living and leave her in the home? Or do they sell the home, move them both in? Or do they sell the home, move him in? and rent her her own apartment nearby so that's she huge. could still be close. That's huge. But that's a big decision. Yes. So they came to me to ask, okay, before we make these decisions, we need to know what is the family home worth? Mm -hmm. You know, what is it marketable at and what can we walk away with? What are local rentals, you know, going know, for? Going for? Mm -hmm. Then they needed to know from the senior placement specialist, what is the cost of moving our father into a facility like this or a community like this? What's the additional cost if we have to move them both? They had to sit down with their elder care attorney and figure out what documents they needed to have in place should the home sell before or after. They were also in the process of getting their father onto Medicaid, which is a process. Um, they also needed to talk with a financial advisor. So they needed to reach out to what we often call our circle of care, more than just one person, all these people involved, to be able to make 
the right decision. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's not about going in and making them sell the home. Right. I want to make sure, no matter who my client is, that I have educated them enough that they know what is the best decision for their family and their situation. Because everybody's different. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And whether you're buying or selling here in Palm Beach County or anywhere in the country, and you're looking for someone with these credentials, please reach out to us because if I can't help you, I promise you I know another SRES or Seniors Real Estate Specialist who could. And I think one of the things that you talked about is we deal with elder law attorneys. We deal with guardianship with Pam, who you're going to be learning from what she does with that. There's so many people that we are involved in that have put this program together. And I have to do a special shout out to Brooklyn Amaro because she really has put this together. We have now viewers in Calgary, Canada. Hi, Tim. Hi, Tannis. We have several from the UK that are calling in to find out that they want to be part of the show. One of them is Wendy Mitchell that I talked about previously, that she had early onset dementia and started writing books, and she just wrote her third book. And so if you know of anybody out there that um, is dealing with dementia or with a loved one, she's written three books, Somebody I Used to Know, What I Wish People Knew About Dementia, and now her third and final book is How to Live with the End in Mind. So definitely something to look into with Wendy Mitchell. She's got a Facebook page and a website. But then, so after I spoke with Wendy, then I had this wonderful uh, couple from Calgary, Canada call me. Um, they saw a gentleman on TikTok that the only thing left to his wife's memory was her voice on his voicemail message. And something happened with the phone and he lost it. Oh. And he was devastated, and he didn't know what to do, and he needed to get this back. And so Tim heard this, who's an artist and a handyman. His wife also heard this, who is a librarian. And they decided to put this app on a phone together. It's called the Echo Box Memory Vault. Echo Box Memory Vault. You have to check their website. It's got a Facebook page. It's recipes. It's their favorite songs. It's some of their favorite pictures that not only helps the one dealing with dementia to family. get them out of a frustrated situation, but it's a memory that's kept forever to, for the families that are left behind. Memories of what mom's favorite recipe was, what her favorite song was. And so she's even, they're even, you can ask them questions and they can record the right. answers. So you can find out about your family history or what your mother or father's favorite things were right and you have that after they're gone which right I think is beautiful and they knew nothing about nothing so they they put it in the hands of some great people and now they've produced this app that may not come out i don't think i think it was november they had mentioned okay. it may not be out till then but if you get a chance definitely look at their facebook page look at their um, website again it's called the echo box memory vault um, but n next after the commercial we are going to be talking to Pam Weeder regarding guardianship, Heidi Friedman regarding elder law, um, how they come together to work together, and maybe even at times how they don't want to have to work together because sometimes one becomes more of a struggle than the other. Um, these are def these are not only great <laughs> friends of ours and colleagues, but sponsors to our launch party. So we do thank you for that. That meant a lot to us believing in us. And, and remember, you can reach out to the show at any time. Um, if you have a topic that you'd like to hear about or something um, you'd like us to feature that you mm -hmm. know about that we might not have touched on yet. And you can always reach us here at 561-800-6654. Leave us a message. Let us know what you'd like to hear about or our email is seniorstrategies.pb at gmail.com. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on the show what you want to hear more of, or you may even have questions today. Dealing with elder law and guardianship, there's going to be a lot of questions that come up. So it's good for you to put those into us so that we know how to answer and then get you connected. Connected to the right person to right. answer your questions. Because this is a daunting thing. And like you said, even with selling a home, to have to get elder law attorneys and everything else. So come back after the commercial and we're going to talk more with Heidi and Pam. Hi, I'm Amy Decker with Senior Helpers. And I'm Shane Silver, a Seniors Real Estate Specialist with the Silver Team at Keller Williams. We are so excited about a new show that we're launching, Senior Strategies, Tools for the Caregiver. We know that being a caregiver can be lonely and very overwhelming, and we want to help. And so we hope to empower you with resources and tools that you probably didn't even know existed. We'll be having some great conversations with people and companies you probably never knew existed 
and never knew you needed. We just can't wait for you to join us. Come join us for some laughs and fun as we give you some tools to use. See you soon. <laughs> Are you considering selling your home? Are you considering downsizing? Are you considering a transition to an independent or assisted living community? Are you considering moving to be closer to your family? Do you need a home more conducive to aging in place? If so, you want to talk to Shane Silver, co-host of Senior Strategies and Senior Real Estate Specialist. Shane and her real estate team are extremely knowledgeable and experienced when it comes to helping seniors and their families make life's important transitions. Shane will guide you every step of the way, making the transition as stress-free as possible. To schedule a no-obligation consultation, call 561-735-735. 3030. At Senior Helpers, our mission is to ensure a better quality of life for our clients and their families by providing dependable and affordable care. Our caregivers are not just certified in Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's care, but they can also help with light therapeutic exercise, in-home safety, fall prevention, transportation assistance, medication management, fresh meal prep, and personal care and companionship. At Senior Helpers, we help family members better understand the different stages of the disease and create the right kind of care plan customized for you and your loved one. For more information, contact us at 561-969-9990. NPTU is a mobile pain management provider caring for patients in their homes or skilled and assisted nursing facilities. NPTU can help with prescribing medications, joint and spine injections, under ultrasound guidance, with a specialty in neurostimulators. Neurostimulators can help reduce the need for narcotic pain medication and are covered by Medicare with a secondary insurance at 100%. NPTU and Tracy Leshinsky is the only provider of this device within a 250 mile radius. Services Palm Beach and North Power Counties, contact NPTU today at 561 901-1182. Welcome back to Senior Strategies with Amy and Shane. Coming up next are more tools and resources you will need to make your journey of caregiving a little easier. For more information or to be a guest on the show, please contact us at 561-800-6654. And now, on with the show. Thank you, and welcome back. This is Senior Strategies, Tools for the Caregiver, and we're glad you're with us today. And we're really excited for you to hear from our guests that are good friends, our colleagues for many, year, um, many years. And the first is going to be Heidi Friedman. I met Heidi several years ago at an elder law firm. We had way too much fun working together. And so now she is going to talk about what the difference is between elder law and just a normal estate planning attorney, or people can get on and Google thinking they're going to Google their own legal paperwork together. But Heidi Friedman, tell us first of all a little about who you are, what you do, and go girl. So first of all, thank you very much for having me. I really, I'm so proud of you guys for doing this. I think it's amazing and it's such a much needed um, like podcast because people do need to have these the, these tools resources. and understand and resources and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So yes, and Amy and I have met, did meet each other many, many years ago. We do have a lot of very funny stories that we won't get into. So that'll be another um, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a whole different kind of podcast. <laughs> um, so again, my name is Heidi Friedman. I am a board certified elder law attorney. Um, I've been practicing elder law for quite some time. Um, one of the big things to, to realize the difference between an estate lawyer and an elder law attorney is what basically the focuses of the representation. When you're going to see an estate lawyer, their focus is really on how do you get your assets to your loved ones upon your death? Where do they go? You wanna make sure to try to avoid probate, um, things of that nature. You wanna make sure that your, your, basically your assets go where you want them to go and you can actually protect some of them and, and control some of them through the grave based on what you wanna do. Um, as far as an elder law attorney, what we do is we want to make sure that you have enough assets to leave when you die. So we want to make sure that you're protecting your assets during your lifetime and making sure that you are setting yourself up so that you don't expend 
extra dollars um, paying for long-term care or guardianships. <laughs> you know, if you can avoid that, that's a very big expense, a guardianship. Um, but in, you know, some cases it's really a much, it's a much um, needed service that, especially when you're dealing with families and maybe family dynamics, that they do need to bring somebody in, a third party in. Um, but a lot of what we do as elder law attorneys is asset protection. And we're protecting assets not against creditors or things like that, but really and truly against the extraordinary cost of long-term care. Long-term care can be very, very expensive, as you heard Shane talk you know, earlier about moving somebody into an assisted living facility. One of the biz biggest questions or concerns is how do you pay for that? You know, going into the assisted living facility, finding the right space, selling property, but then on top of that, how do you pay for it? Um, assisted living facilities can cost anywhere in the neighborhood of $3,500 to $6,500 down here. Skilled nursing facilities or nursing homes can cost upwards in the neighborhood of ten dollars to $15,000 a month for a shared room. So a lot of people are very concerned about how they can pay for that. So what we do is we help people protect their assets, transfer assets within the family so that they can qualify for certain programs that will help pay for long-term care, such as Medicaid and or VA benefits for those veterans who are wartime veterans and or surviving spouses. Um, how do we do that? We do that using the estate plan. So that is another big difference between going to an estate lawyer who's really just going to look at your assets, set up a trust, do what you need to do um, so that you can get those dollars to your loved one upon death. But what we do is we're going to help you set it up so where you can qualify for benefits, you can get those benefits to help pay for that care, and then you could stretch out the dollars. Hopefully your family member or you yourself do not run out of money paying for long-term care. Um, one of the other very important things that really needs to be done by a proper attorney, and I get this all the time, we is your incapacity documents. And what do I mean by that? Your durable power of attorney and your health care directives. Um, I cannot tell you how many times I see a durable power of attorney that's not done properly. And what happened to that case and why it's so bad not to go ahead and pull your durable power of attorney off the internet or get them from your neighbor's best friend who is an attorney that practices something else, but they are going to do this durable power of attorney for you, is because without a proper durable power of attorney, if your loved one does become incapacitated and is no longer able to sign that document because either they don't recognize you or they don't understand the document, then you are looking at a guardianship. So it's really important to make sure that those documents are properly done um, by an, a proper attorney. You want me to still talk for five mm -hmm. more minutes? Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I thought I was going to be asking questions. But, well, well, here's what I was going to ask you. Yes. So you said, so you get a durable power of attorney and you look at it, you realize it's not done right. What, what are the flaws on that that they didn't do right? What did they miss? So in each state, and it's interesting because I did have clients that came in to me today and they are, they are from New York. They moved down here. They have durable power of attorney from New York. And actually, their financial planner was sending them to a New York attorney to redo them, even though they were down here. And I mentioned to them that, you know, when you're talking about durable powers of attorney, they are state specific. Now, in the state of Florida, we have certain rules and regulations that have to be in that durable power of attorney. So, for example, you can't have a durable power of attorney anymore that simply says, I'm allowing the person that I choose as my agent, and that agent is the person that steps into your shoes and can act for you with regards to anything that you have to do with regarding finances, whether it's property, whether it's your tangible items, whether it's creating a trust. That's, who, that's what the durable power of attorney does. But in the state of Florida, our durable powers of attorney have to be very specific. We can't just simply say, oh, they can do anything that we want them to do. They have to have everything in them that you want them to be able to do. Because so one can cover uh, finances and one can cover just health decisions. Well, health care directives are very different. Okay. So you're talking about two different documents, okay. right? So you're talking about your durable power of attorney really does deal with your property, your real estate, your your tangible property, anything to do with your money, assets. your finances. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want somebody to be able to sue on your behalf or if you get sued, um, you know, creating trusts, things like that, paying your bills, anything like that, your health care directives are different. And my health care directives and most health care directives have three parts to them. One, who do I choose to right. make those health care decisions for me and trust? And who do I choose if I'm not sick that 
I mean, if I'm sick, but I'm not dying, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if I'm sick and I'm not dying, but I'm not capable of making those healthcare decisions. I mean, if COVID or anything else has taught us anything, it's it, sickness can hit any of us. It doesn't really matter what age we are anymore. Right, right. and family right. dynamics change. So if Very you don't so. get those updated, you really should look at those papers because guess what? Aunt Sue may have passed away. Right, right. Uncle right. Joe you might not like or trust anymore. Right, exactly. So you've got to make sure that's exactly who you other, want to still make those decisions. The other part, the other most important part about the health care directive is really and truly is the living will. Now, a lot yes. of people have living wills, but they don't have the other piece. But right. the living will is what you tell people or you tell your family members or you tell whoever is involved in your care, what do you want to have happen in right. the event that you are terminal? In my own family, when my aunt had, um, she had breast cancer, she beat it the first time. The second time she did not, um, they had to remove it. She was a heavy, heavy smoker. They were able to remove the cancer out of her, but they couldn't get her off the tube. They couldn't wow. get her off the breathing thing. Mm -hmm. And I have four cousins and two of them wanted to keep her and keep her there because it's an emotional decision, right? Sure. So they wanted to keep her alive. They weren't ready to let her go. The other two were like, we're not going to leave her living like that. And they started to fight. I mean, it really became a, a, a really issue for the family. And luckily my aunt had actually prepared and signed a health care a living will wow. so her mm -hmm. decision was taken out of her children's name and they did unplug her i hate to say it that way and she died literally within 30 minutes but so those it wasn't were her like, wishes but, but those they were, were her wishes, wishes. right yes. those were so her wishes. it mm -hmm. saved the family because again my cousins were fighting and who so, wants to make that decision right. no and, one nobody, nobody. Right. right and i can tell you when my own mother and i took care of my mother for six weeks before she died and um, she went on hospice and she had those health care directives so we knew that when her time came that we were not going to put in any life prolonging procedures we could have we could have prolonged my mom's life right. but to what end right um, but you being her daughter her you know what let's hope that that's exactly how it happened yes you know? and it was okay good all right, so now we are going to be talking to Pam Wiener. She is guardianship. Um, she's gonna talk about if something happens and they don't do what they're supposed to do with Heidi <laughs> on the time that they're supposed to do it and the way they're supposed to do it, what happens then when it's handed to Pam? And Pam, you're wonderful. Thank you for everything that you do for our community. You're a good friend of ours, we love you. Tell us who you are, what you do. Thank you so much for bringing me in today and thank you Heidi that was great look guardianship is a last resort and we come into play when families are fighting um, no one agrees on who should make decisions um, typically guardianship comes into play when there are no family members sometimes we have to research and research and find people um, if we have an emergency temporary guardianship or something like that um, but when people have out-of-date documents, I think it's really important to emphasize what Heidi is talking about. Um, everyone has passed away that they've, they've designated to speak for them when they can't speak for themselves or make decisions when they can't make for themselves. If they don't keep those up to date, if they don't check in with an attorney every, I don't know, five years, do you recommend 10? Yeah, we usually recommend five years. Yeah. Then a professional can stand in. Now, Florida state law does ask that family members get first crack at a guardianship. It makes sense to all of us. Um, but it's often contested because siblings may not agree or, or family members may not be able to handle it. And we, we divide stuff kind of like the attorneys do into person and property. Those are kind of distinct in the way guardianship is looked at. And it's, it may be very difficult for family members to handle one part or the other. The caregiving, which is what your show is about, the appointments, the insurance, the Medicaid, the Medicare, the differences, et cetera, that may be very difficult, or they may be pretty well versed in that, but they can't handle the mortgage or the reverse mortgage or the investments or mm -hmm. paying the bills or getting that dog its flea treatment every month mm -hmm. and getting the poodle to the groomer. Mm -hmm. You know, these kinds of property, I don't mean to call the dog property, but it is kind of. But it's a, it's a lot to deal with. And right. so many are, things that people don't think about. So many things you don't realize right. are included in being a caregiver. Right. 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 And so we are there as a, a last resort and in some respects, which we'll talk about kind of a first resort to make life easier, 
perhaps for a caregiver or for the person themselves? So um, that is um, kind of the difference between voluntary and involuntary. So talk to that um, when it comes to guardianship. Yeah, it's really important that people in the community know, caregivers or people who are struggling a little, that a voluntary guardianship is available for someone who's very frail. Maybe they have macular degeneration and they can't really see their computer and their bills anymore. Um, they can't see if they're washing the glasses too well either. Maybe the property needs a little attention. The pool needs a little cleaning. Um, again, the dog needs a grooming. Um, so voluntary guardianship means you have capacity. You know what you're doing, but you're not quite able to manage the mm -hmm. property right. stuff. And, mm -hmm. and JFS or other professional guardians are available to really help with those issues. It doesn't mean you're demented doesn't mean you're mentally ill. It doesn't mean you have a traumatic brain injury. All reasons for the other kind of guardianship. And traditional guardianship means someone has an impairment of some kind where they can't manage their lives. And the truth of the matter is the goal of guardianship, not the voluntary, but the traditional adjudicated guardianship, the goal is to restore rights. Mm -hmm. If it's a mental health issue, we have a pretty good shot of getting someone stable and medicated and consulting and working together and moving forward. We all know, and you've talked about dementia many times on this show, the likelihood is that someone isn't going to get better and we help them be safe. You know, the JFS and our guardianship team, our goal is just to make sure people get what they need. Right. And, and Jewish them. Family Services, I have to say, are very, you especially, you're a very compassionate, caring person. You follow, I, 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 I see from you on days that you've had a long day with somebody. You're following that person step by step by step, wherever they need to go. Mm -hmm. And you have to have that kind of personality, a compassionate, empathetic person just to be able to do that. And you get involved as, as a family member, Everything really. Everything from taking them to the doctor right. if they have an appointment. Um, I've worked with Pam and her colleagues multiple times when it's come to selling a home and I see how they go above and beyond and I see all the things they are involved in in really caring for this person and making sure that the person that is under their guardianship really is um, taken care of mm -hmm. and really is getting the attention and the care that they need. Yeah, it's we have a lot of respect for the people under our care. Um, you know, we have one guy, he's 97, he's a Holocaust survivor. Aww. And he was livid that someone said he was demented when he got the guardianship. He acknowledges he needs a guardian. Right. He acknowledges that at this point in his life, he can't quite remember everything and keep it together. But Aww. really, it's, and I don't want to get too clinical, but it's a mild cognitive impairment that he has. Um, and we took him back to a restoration hearing to get those words removed from his wow. guardianship documents so that it, it just said, you know, he needs a guardian, mm -hmm, <laughs> right. not dementia. And that same person, um, you know, my team has sat with him, probably local caregivers have worked with Palm Tran Connection before yep. or medical transport, and they're not as reliable as we would like them to be. They right. try hard, right. but they get flat tires. There are people right. who are late to get on, and then the next stop takes longer, whatever. We have sat with our people for two, four, six hours waiting for And how day. long do you stay, generally, is someone per under guardianship? Your care. How long is somebody under, under your, your care? care? Ballpark. We have restored rights only to two people in the six and a half years. And and I'm very proud to say that we were able to do that and it's a goal. Right. Um, but we are with people either until a family member decides they would like to be the guardian or and they succeed pass. us instead mm -hmm. or they pass. Right. And we lost so many during COVID. Right. That's so what many. I figured too. Mm -hmm. It is. But and again, this job, you have to have compassion and empathy. This is not something you can jump into unless you're born with that little trait to be able to wrap your heart around something like that. That's huge. But and I do want to point out, too, something that, that Pam brought up, that sometimes if there are caregivers out there that are extremely overwhelmed and not comfortable making these decisions and don't know enough maybe about 
dementia or right. whatever their loved one is going through, whether it's Parkinson's and or maybe they've been caring for them for years and, and they're just tired. They can't right. do it anymore. Right. You know, voluntary guardianship is not it's not a bad thing. It's a resource that's there to help. Maybe, you know, in my situation where I'm an adult child, right, and it's hard because now I've become that parent. Do now, luckily, my parents have all the documents in place that we need, and I know what their wishes are. But if they didn't, I don't know if I could make those decisions. And maybe those decisions are better made by a legal guardian who has their best interests right. in, you know, right. At now, hand. the voluntary guardianship is only property. Ah, okay. So only okay. property, so you know all of the business end, so to speak, is taken care of. It gives the caregiver more time to do their caregiving. I but see. But there are also care managers or others, and, and I'm sure you'll have them on the show soon enough, that can help provide respite mm -hmm. right. or some other level of a, assistance. Right. And, and even for people without means, the county can provide that. So it, it, it depends on where you are. And property includes if they own a home, their bank account, those types of things, right? That's what they're in charge of. Right down so to the really poodle. it's really not health care decisions. No. Right, it is not health care. Ah, health care okay. is it's excluded. Voluntary. If it's voluntary. If it's so voluntary. we can, we can work. involuntary, it's everything. Right. But the other I thing see. is it's a partnership. So when we have a voluntary ward, a voluntary person under guardianship, if they want to go over prescription drug plans in the fall, it's their responsibility. To, we'll sit with them. We'll right. do it. We'll provide yeah. our expertise. Mm -hmm. um, and if they want a recommendation for health care, and if they want us to accompany them to an appointment to help them remember or process information, we will. But that's up to them. Right. So they can... They can put a stop on how much or how little, yeah. but we make sure they're not exploited. The thing that happens when people get very old and frail, not everybody, please, but many, if they get more isolated, and we've all heard about the studies about isolation right. and, and mm -hmm. how vulnerable people can be, they tend to get very generous. Oh, you, yeah. And you may perceive that as buying a friendship, or you may simply perceive it as generosity or mm -hmm. facilitating a human connection. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you're 90, you really need those resources for yes. yourself. Right. right. You need and some of that too, I know when my mom was, she also had early onset dementia. To her, being generous with somebody else was, she still had power over her money. She loved tipping. She loved giving money to people because she felt like this is mine and I still feel I can give that to somebody else. And that still makes me feel good right. about myself. So a lot of times that was the case. We had to keep mm -hmm. reminding her that she really shouldn't be doing that. Right. Um, but I do feel that their money is, they've lost their driver's license. They've, they've lost, lost their home. So much. Someone's bathing them. Someone's showering them. Someone's bring, So if they have a few bucks, it's if they can give it to 20 bucks, they're, right. they still have control over something. Right. Right. So they feel yeah. all their control wasn't taken away. All their exactly. So it's a good thing. I mean, like like Heidi talked about too. If they don't have their paperwork together, you know, you don't want to have to, to go into a guardianship. But my goodness, if you do, then you hope you have somebody like Pam. And Pam, if somebody had questions about this and wanted to talk to you directly, how would they get a hold of you? Anyone on the guardianship team would be happy to answer questions, 561-684-1991. There's also uh, the professional guardianship organization, the Florida State Guardianship yes. Association in Tallahassee. I don't know that number by heart, FSGA. but I'm on the board. Right, FSGA. Right. And there's the Office of Public and Professional Guardians in Tallahassee. It's part of the Department of Elder Affairs. And that's also where you go if you want to make a complaint. Right, right. That's good. Yeah. And Heidi, same for you. So it would, since we're blending the two of you together, if somebody then decided, oh my goodness, you know, my parents. I don't parents, have these documents. Yeah, do or I my do? parents' paperwork is 27 and a half years old. So we need to talk to Heidi. What's the best way to get in contact with you? Um, the best way to get in con contact with us is to call our office, 954-866-1055. You can also go on our website at um, www.elderlawdepartment. It's dept.com. That's um, great. I did want to just say one thing about the guardianship and why it is really so important to have your own documents. Their voluntary guardianship, I think, is great, and that's great for people who want to have somebody step in and help them and take care of them. But when you're talking about doing a typical or your traditional guardianship, 
what people have to understand is their rights get removed. They no longer have the right to do whatever the court has removed from them. They get they get they get adjudicated as incapacitated and then the court actually Absolutely. removes those rights. So they're not able to do what they want to do versus when you have a durable power of attorney, mm -hmm. if you sign that durable power of attorney and you've named who you want to act for you and your agent or whatever, you still have the right to act. So we'll get a lot of times where we'll get children who will say, I, you know, I want my mother to move here. Or I want to make sure I can do this or I want to do this. And their parent doesn't want to go. What does your mother want? <laughs> right. And that's my, right. always my, you know, listen, you, if you want to step in and act and actually be them, then you have to go through a guardianship. And it's not an easy process. It's not like, no. it, you know, the process for, for doing a guardianship is once you file the petition, the court sends three people to you. And to, how long to the does person. that take generally? Yeah. It, depends it really does depend mm -hmm. you know there are emergency situations and it can happen in a couple of weeks and it could be oh, emergency would still be a couple of weeks yeah yeah but an emergency you also have to meet the certain requirements to be an emergency not oh. everything is an emergency right. you have, so if you it have to show an emergency just a general like, how long would that take ballpark still a few weeks you've got to go to the courthouse weeks. Mm -hmm. You got to go to the judge. Okay, right and you have to do it and, and that's know. and an important point also that Heidi is saying and actually, you know what, that important further? point that Heidi was also saying, we're going to do that after the commercial. Okay. So thank you so much. We'll be right back. Please join us after the commercial. Hi, I'm Amy Decker with Senior Helpers. And I'm Shane Silver, a seniors real estate specialist with the Silver Team at Keller Williams. We are so excited about a new show that we're launching, Senior Strategies, Tools for the Caregiver. We know that being a caregiver can be lonely and very overwhelming, and we want to help. And so we hope to empower you with resources and tools that you probably didn't even know existed. We'll be having some great conversations with people and companies you probably never knew existed and never knew you needed. We just can't wait for you to join us. Come join us for some laughs and fun as we give you some tools to use. See you soon. Are you considering selling your home? Are you considering downsizing? Are you considering a transition to an independent or assisted living community? Are you considering moving to be closer to your family? Do you need a home more conducive to aging in place? If so, you want to talk to Shane Silver, co-host of Senior Strategies and Senior Real Estate Specialist. Shane and her real estate team are extremely knowledgeable and experienced when it comes to helping seniors and their families make life's important transitions. Shane will guide you every step of the way, making the transition as stress-free as possible. To schedule a no-obligation consultation, call 561-735-3030. At Senior Helpers, our mission is to ensure a better quality of life for our clients and their families by providing dependable and affordable care. Our caregivers are not just certified in Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's care, but they can also help with light therapeutic exercise, in-home safety, fall prevention, transportation assistance, medication management, fresh meal prep, and personal care and companionship. At Senior Helpers, we help family members better understand the different stages of the disease and create the right kind of care plan customized for you and your loved one. For more information, contact us at 561-969-9990. NPTU is a mobile pain management provider caring for patients in their homes or skilled in assisted nursing facilities. NPTU can help with prescribing medications, joint and spine injections under ultrasound guidance with a specialty in neurostimulators. Neurostimulators can help reduce the need for narcotic pain medication and are covered by Medicare with a secondary insurance at 100%. NPTU and Tracy Leshinsky is the only provider of this device within a 250 mile radius. Services Palm Beach and North Power Counties, contact NPTU today at 561-901-1182. Welcome back to Senior Strategies with Amy and Shane. Coming up next are more tools and resources you will need to make your journey of caregiving a little easier. For more information or to be a guest on the show, please contact us at 
800-600-6654. And now, on with the show. Hi, welcome back to our show. So we have Heidi and we have Pam, and now we're going to talk about how, how all of us can work together. So if you've got elder law, they've got their, their paperwork together and everything's groovy, that's fine. But if it's not groovy and now we have to go to right. a guardianship, then a guardianship could include something that senior helpers would have to step in to assist with personal care in the home. Or if you decide to sell the home and now Shane needs to step in and sell the home altogether. Once again, we always talk about your circle of care and being a caregiver you need a lot of resources. Right. And we're hoping that we can bring you those tools and resources to show you things that maybe you haven't thought of. And so Pam, before we, before we went to commercial, you had a comment that I wanted you to continue with. Well, I, I think it's really important to remember, as Heidi was saying, with family members being chosen for power of attorney and when that kicks in, when that doesn't kick in, the guardianship is as collaborative as possible. But generally speaking, you know, they, our clients are fairly demented through one diagnosis or another. Traumatic brain injury patients, very seriously chronically mentally ill. So it's not always a senior. It's all it's different not ages. It's always a senior. Right. And what so, are your, what's your age group? Oh boy. Well, I got a call today about a 27-year-old young woman with anorexia whose oh, father wow. is her guardian. Wow. And it reminded, I thought it was the other 27-year-old person with anorexia that I learned about a couple of years ago, and it was not. So another one where the father is kind of frustrated and maybe seeking a successor and I don't know where that's going to go. So it can be that young. I had a, a 36-year-old beauty queen. Wow. And I have a 104-year-old. Wow. 104. Yeah, wow. So it's the gamut. And I'm you sure know. you see all the family dynamics as well. Right. All the dynamics. That's yeah. probably almost the most yeah, challenging part. Mm -hmm. it, it's amazing, and I'm sure you see it in senior helpers. Absolutely. Um, how sometimes some of our clients, and, and they may be your clients too with capacity, they feel much more comfortable with the newcomers in their lives. Right. The caregivers that come into their lives mm -hmm. and the children that they raised or abandoned or didn't raise. Right, right. Um, and, and trying to navigate that is, is very difficult. But it is, and so many emotions are involved. And mm -hmm. I think you and, you and I, Pam, we've talked a lot about just different emotions that are involved, even caring for my mom. Like you want to make the best decision for her, but at the time now she's she's bitter because she doesn't want those decisions being made, made for her. Well, but again, if she had her, you know, paperwork in place, which she did because I worked with you, Heidi, and you right. made sure that all of my mom's paperwork was where it needed to be, thank God. But it's not only that, it's gotta be like, even for you, Shane, I mean, you're, you're, you, you said it perfectly, you stepped into the role of the parent. Mm -hmm. And- And she's got little kids. Well, yeah, but just stepping into the role of the parent is a very emotional situation for a lot of adult children. But yet they need to. I can't right. tell you how many times I've had cases, I've had clients that come to me and they're like, well, I don't want to put my mother into X, Y, and Z. I don't want to do this. Right. But yet that's ultimately the best decision for them. Mm -hmm. But they're like, but my mother said I can't do it. Or, or it, it's a I very, it's very, by her wishes. It's, and it's, it's very challenging because mm -hmm. you do sometimes have to step in and become the parent to your parent and they don't like it. Right. They're and not. It, they're not going right. to be so. Well, you know, we wouldn't like it either. No, I mean, of course not. Right. Of course, I told my children they have to parent me, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but especially when it's someone with dementia, because when I look at my mother, I see mm -hmm. my mother. But physically, she's not there. it's my mother. Right. And it's but, her voice. And it's her voice. So you but, expect what comes out of it should be something your mother would normally say. Correct. And it's but not. it's not my mother. My mother, unfortunately is no longer, right. but her body is there, and this is a new version of herself. And things that she never cared about before, she obsesses about now, and things that she obsessed about before, she doesn't care about now. So it's and a as, mourning process, almost, of the mother that, even though she's still around, you're mourning the mom that you knew before. They call it the longest goodbye, and yes. it truly, and truly it is. is. Yeah. But when mm -hmm. it comes to making decisions, you know, there are times when, yes, exactly like Heidi said, mm -hmm. I have to, almost put my parents' hat on and think of it as this is my child and I have to make the decision that's best for them. 
but then 24 hours later something happens to me and I want to call my mom and cry because that's what a daughter does and right. I can't no but so, the blessing okay. is that you know your mother you've known her I won't say how many years <laughs> Please. 10 years less than I've been alive you know her <laughs> and it's it facilitates being able to make a good decision mm -hmm. and in guardianship sometimes we get randomly assigned mm -hmm. to someone off the wheel and you know Wait, say that again you get what you get randomly random. assigned oh a new randomly client, assigned. a new ward gotcha. off the wheel yeah and you know phd or not there's only so much Harriet the spy work you can do mm -hmm. to try to figure out yeah. who is this person? Right. What is right. important to this person? And it, we really take that seriously. We want them in the least restrictive environment they can be, and we want them to get what they need. And how do you get that information? Do you meet with them personally and just sit down and have them? Yeah, I but a lot of our people can't kind have of have delusions. They don't have right. that. They don't have it anymore, <laughs> They can't right? have that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I was at that right. who they are. with right. someone last week I went and she you know I was trying to figure out who was in her world and like six out of eight Aww. people were fantasy people and I I've, I've seen that too wow. I've had I've talked to adult children and about that. it's really interesting I had a I had a case where I was sitting and it was me and the daughter had come with her husband and her mom and we started to talk and all of a sudden the mom starts mentioning this guy steve and i'm thinking i don't know these people at all i was talking to them about doing Wait, let me write planning right so i'm like right. she wants steve to be her power of attorney and i'm going okay um all right so steve? initially <laughs> i thought it was the because of course i couldn't remember the son-in-law's name so i thought that was his name and i'm like oh i thought <laughs> initially i thought it, i thought your name and i looked at him and i thought i thought your name was was whatever it was and he's like yeah we don't know who steve is <laughs> We have no idea. Oh, and the mom she's was living in her own but little the fantasy thing world. Was she oh. presented to, to talk to her. You didn't You'd have no idea right. Yeah. Right. that there was no Steve. They don't even know who a Steve was. They don't. And it was so bizarre for mm -hmm. me to sit there and be like, okay, well, this and there woman was is probably talking about somebody in the know. wrinkle of her brain named Steve yep, many, many right. years ago that she loved right. and trusted that no one knew about. Or, or something. Steve Martin. I mean, or it yeah. could have been anybody. Or a Steve McQueen show. <laughs> right. right. It could have been anybody. <laughs> it could but have yet, been a character on TV that yeah. she connected with. Yeah. Right. But yet she's telling me she wants him as her durable power of attorney. Wow. And that's when I was like, listen, this is not, she's not going to, she's not yeah. capacitated. You have to go through guardianship And when you go to guardianship, you know, it's important when you're choosing a guardian and you don't have to have one in your pocket you can get one off the wheel and the judge can assign a professional to you but remember many guardians are attorneys no disparagement many are social workers and have strong clinical insight I'd like to think um, others have real estate expertise because a lot are doing a lot of property things, right? right? Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. investment people yep. that are guardians. But so it's still very good to be choosy. They have movies about guardianship where people come in, scary movies about that, where yes, people come indeed. in and take over There's that. There's scary movies about every, every yeah. aspect about of being everything. a senior. Yes, but you're right, sorry. <laughs> so so it, it's important when you have someone with special needs yes. that the person who's helping them have insight into those special needs. Absolutely. Right. You know, Absolutely. JFS can offer that and a whole range of assistance. Right. And the good thing about the guardianship is once you become the guardian, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, we have, we've actually worked with guardians to get planning done. We've worked with guardians to, we'll, we'll present a report about, to the judge. They have to present to the judge saying why we need to protect assets, why we need to do certain things, oh, get yeah. them qualified for Medicaid. Mm -hmm. And then they also can work with people like you guys so that they can bring in the best, right. the best services. They can bring right. in, you know, you know Shane to, to help sell the property and they can bring you guys in to help so set up to do senior, the personal right, care to do yeah. the personal care right mm -hmm. so the guardian is kind of if you think about it kind of the person that like looks at the whole picture and says what does this person need right and they're the right. ones that and are the Medicaid planning and the right. VA planning right. is so, so important we we got a call this week an email from one of our clients and she's got a personality disorder, but she also has a lot of clarity. You know, it's, it's, she's very eccentric. Um, but she really needs a guardian because those eccentricities are extreme. Mm -hmm. um, but she's very bright and very uh, capable of using technology and everything else. And, you know, lo and behold, we find out the deceased husband was a Korean War veteran. Oh, wow. wow. Who knew? Wow. You know, yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> 
That opens up the door for VA but benefits. But that's the best part of it. Care. And I think that's the beauty of this show is we get to get everybody together to bring stories together. Um, and, and one of the things that we have on top of the show, which helps so many people that feel like they're by themselves, is we have a support group. Yes, we have our Senior Strategy Support Group, which meets once a, mo once mm -hmm. a month on the third Thursday of the month at 5 p.m. at Allegro Senior Living mm -hmm. in Boynton Beach. And that's on Hagen Ranch. And if you want to join us, it is going to be this, this Thursday, Thursday at 5 p.m. At 5 p.m. You will need to RSVP, mm -hmm. and that number is 561 424 3294. And it's a great support group if you feel that maybe you would like to learn more about assisted living, independent living, memory care. It's a great time for you to go and you could take a tour and see what you think. And also, again, one of the th reasons we're here is to show you that you are not alone. Right. So in the support group, you might meet someone who's going through the same thing you are or caring for someone who's going through the same thing you are. And it's great to see how Build they each connect other up. and help each other and That's rely right. on each other. That's right. And so, the, like I said, the beauty of this show is just all the bits and pieces that we can bring together to help you as a caregiver. On our next show, we have Jeffrey DeLavora. He is the Trauma Center Coordinator, coordinator at Delray Medical Center. Um, and he's going to be talking about ways to prevent traumas in the home, especially with seniors. Okay. And then we have what? No, go ahead. I was oh. going to say especially falls. Yes, falls. especially falls because that is the biggest thing is are the falls and how you can prevent that. And then we've got Carol Hirsch, who's also a dear friend of ours. And the name of her company is to is Prepare to Care Emergency Companions, which you will see on our commercial because she runs her commercial doing, yes. talking about exactly that. She's a certified patient advocate. advocate. She sits with those at the hospital so that they don't have to be by themselves. So pairing her with somebody that is at the hospital de dealing with traumas, they're gonna talk about the best way to keep your loved ones, especially out seniors, of out of the hospital. That's the most important thing. And I hope that if you're out there listening or watching tonight, if you connected with a story and if you find yourself in that position or if you know someone in that position and you want to be connected with Pam or Heidi or us, there's a lot of ways you can reach out to us. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Senior Strategies. You can also call us at PB. Yes, seniorstrategies.pb for Palm Beach because mm -hmm. we're down here in Palm Beach mm -hmm. County. However, we can um, connect you with resources all throughout the state of Florida, so yes. don't forget that. That's right. Um, or you can always call in at 561-800-6654 or email us at seniorstrategies.pb at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and keep an eye on our other social medias because that will tell us all the different information that we're going to have for each show. Thank you again to Pam and Heidi. Great friends. And again, call us if you've got any questions at 561-800-6654. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you have any um, topics you'd like to hear us talk about or any resources that you'd like us to discuss, please give us a call. And we hope that you learned something. We hope you gave, we gave you a new tool to use on your caregiving journey. Thank you so much. Again, 561-800-6654. We'll see you for our next show. Thank you for joining us today on Senior Strategies. We hope that you found the tools and the strategies that we offered you beneficial for your journey as a caregiver. We want you to leave today feeling empowered and supported. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for upcoming shows and events. For more information, to schedule a consultation or to join a support group, please contact us at 561-800-6654. And remember the strategies and tools you can use to, to make, make your, your journey, journey easier. easier.